Okay, so welcome to the webinar or the Zoom session for the program called International Education Policy and Management. Um, this is our first webinar, and I know you just received your letters a few days ago, and this might be pretty soon, pretty early for you to think about what questions you have. And so I thought we will have this session, and it's recorded, and, and you can also watch it again that my main purpose is just to introduce you to the program and mostly to uh, our amazing faculty members and um, into um, what for them to join me welcome you and uh, to this program to Peabody College and so um, with um, I, I don't want to delay this further we probably run this session for about 45 minutes but I will start with introducing our faculty and then uh, because it's a really early morning we have uh, lots of classes being taught and meetings and so faculty members will probably exit and then I will uh, tell you more about our program we will run a couple of slides and see if you have any questions so I will start with Professor Tom Smith Thanks, Joe. Um, congratulations, everybody, for being admitted to the IPM program. Um, I, I hope you get some of your questions uh, answered today, but I also hope that you find uh, an opportunity to reach out to some uh, current students to get a real sense of uh, you know, what it's like to be in this program at Vanderbilt. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, myself and something that I'm uh, designing that I'm quite uh, excited about that you may have an opportunity to take advantage of. Um, so, you know, part of my background uh, in education uh, started uh, in international. Um, I worked for the uh, OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in Paris uh, for several years on the Education at a Glance uh, publication, which compares um, the uh, OECD uh, countries to each other on a range of indicators, uh, achievements, school, culture things. Um, and I got to work on PISA. I've also done work for the UNESCO uh, Institute uh, for Statistics in developing uh, indicators and analyses on teachers and teacher quality uh, throughout the world. And uh, as part of my work, uh, when I first came to Vanderbilt in 2001, I co-directed a project where we worked with um, uh, district leaders uh, across the United States in developing systems for improving the support structures for teachers. Um, we thought that this was going to be a mainly uh, a topic which would be of interest to uh, kind of American audiences, but uh, we had some Chinese colleagues at Beijing Normal University that got very interested uh, in our work and ended up doing a parallel uh, study in four uh, provinces in China which ended up being kind of a very uh, exciting comparison uh, for us uh, to be able to look at uh, instruction in uh, China and in the US and the support structures that allow those differences to, to happen. Um, uh, I went away from Vanderbilt for uh, eight years and have recently come back uh, after serving as an administrator at a university in California. And uh, I teach in uh, the IPM uh, program. One of the courses that I teach is Research Methods and Data Analysis 2, which follows a course that um, Dr. Cravens uh, teaches, which is the first course in that. And about a third of the students are uh, IEPM. And we try to emphasize you know, some international issues as you're developing your methods and uh, statistical uh, expertise. Uh, one course that I am working on designing right now that I'm quite excited about is called Where in the World um, is Education Improving? And as part of the course, uh, students will kind of examine data from uh, PISA and TIMS to identify which countries are making the biggest sustained uh, improvements uh, in uh, achievement. We'll do kind of a deep dive to try to understand, you know, what about um, you know, those uh, education systems kind of facilitated that, you know, was it leadership, was it coaching, was it uh, some other kind of uh, within or outer school uh, piece? And we'll try to understand what are the cultural factors that allowed that to happen in a particular uh, country. And then as part of the course, which we may offer either during spring or Maymester, we're gonna take a trip to one of these countries 
you know, possibly Singapore, possibly uh, Finland, so that the students can really get a feel for what the education system looks like. So I probably spoke too long, but uh, uh, I'm really excited about a new cohort of students. This is a great program and I'll pass it back to Dr. Curtis. Thank you so much, Professor Smith. Uh, we're so glad you're here and being a part of the IEPM program. Um, so next I would uh, go to Professor Felipe Barrera Osario, uh, another flagship professors uh, for our program. And uh, I will, um, uh, I'm so excited to um, have, um, have you here this morning. I know both of you and Tom are very busy. Um, go ahead, Felipe. <laughs> You, thank you so much uh, for these invitations. Ca can you hear me? Very good. So thank you. Thank you for the invitation to talk with, with the prospective students. I am Felipe Barrero Osorio. I am an economist. Uh, uh, I was born in Colombia. And I, uh, before coming to Vanderbilt in 2002, uh, 2020, I work in my in Colombia in a research institute, then I moved to the World Bank, then I moved to Harvard, and finally I arrived to Vanderbilt, uh, my home. Um, I, uh, as I mentioned, I am an economist by training, and the type of research that I do is, uh, I am trying to establish uh, causal effects from policy to different outcomes in education. Uh, the outcomes can range from test scores to socio-emotional skills. Uh, but let me give you two examples of the type of thing that I am doing. I am working in Colombia in one type of a school that is akin to charter schools. And we were able to uh, discuss with the government the, 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 the possibility to do random assignment to these schools. And now we are collecting data on what happened with these uh, students one year after, after they entered these schools. And the idea is to follow these students for several years. Another uh, work that I done again also in Colombia is about conditional cash transfers in which the government gave a, a transfers to low-income families in exchange of human capital accumulation in the household. Uh, I, I am working in, in that program in Colombia as well. Uh, my interest is not only in Colombia, I, uh, I have some work in uh, Latin America, I am trying to focus my, my, my research in Latin America, but I have uh, work in Pakistan, I have work in Uganda, in uh, Kenya, in Cambodia, in different parts of the world. Um, what do I teach? I teach uh, presumably two courses that are relevant for you is I teach one course called, called policy education in low and middle income countries, in which we take it, the stock of impact evaluations, uh, this type of studies, uh, the, same, the same type of ideas that I am working on uh, all across the world. And we try to derive two things. One, what are the methodological aspects that make those studies in, uh, relevant? And secondly, what are the policy implications of those studies? Another course that I teach for the master, uh, from one of the master is economics of education, which basically we take uh, some uh, uh, basic uh, uh, models from economics and we try to see how those models apply to education. Uh, I teach also a, a course on uh, methodical uh, statistics uh, in, in another master, which is data too, and those are my courses. And uh, I am very happy with the prospective students and uh, this is a, a very interesting master. And I think that uh, the, the depth and the spread of things that you can ex be exposed is uh, enormous. Thank you, Sue. Thank you so much, Felipe. We are so, students love your classes and they're learning so much, not just about the methods, but also about how the methods um, can actually be applied uh, in real um, studies and, and making sure they're very rigorous. And so that's um, something that they can take away. Thank you for making the time um, coming by. Have a great day. All right, so next we have Professor Brian Heuser and uh, he's on the phone and uh, we will turn that over to him. Brian, are you there? Hi, Brian, you're muted. 
Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, I, I, uh, I'm driving to an appointment uh, and uh, I apologize, I am in the car. So uh, uh, thank you all for uh, inviting me, really appreciate it. I'll be very, very brief. Uh, uh, like show, I am a product of Vanderbilt and uh, one of the lucky ones who got to stick around and continue to uh, teach at my twice alma mater. Uh, I love the IEPM program. I teach two classes, uh, one on higher education uh, and another one on uh, international ed policy and human development. Um, some of the themes are closely connected, but most of my work is actually at the intersection of higher education and human development. That is, how do different systems uh, over time prioritize uh, different objectives for the higher education systems. How are those systems stratified? Uh, do they have a robust two-year system or are there systems uh, very much like the United States where it's a stepping stone to four-year? Uh, we look at that through a pretty agnostic lens, but also a lens that's directly related to human capital creation and then human potential. Uh, and then uh, my, my other core interest is in the relationship between higher education uh, and global health. Uh, we have a very strong relationship as show, uh, as Dr. Cravens will tell you, we have a very strong relationship with the Vanderbilt uh, Medical School. Uh, we, have a, um, we have a certificate program that we do with uh, Vanderbilt Med and uh, in global health. Uh, and I often look at the relationship between uh, higher education and the capacity of those health systems. So my last uh, research study, which we published in 2020, was actually on faculty priorities uh, for their uh, own professional endeavors. Uh, we had about 22 countries represented in, in that original sample. Uh, we decided to publish uh, our findings on English speaking countries um, because of a lot of uh, comparative issues that you will learn about when you take my class. Uh, the one, the study that I'm working on now is actually uh, a study of top tier global health leaders. Uh, in about 50 countries, and we are trying to understand uh, the role of higher education and hard skills development for the health sector. What we know is that the vast majority of health systems rely very, very heavily on higher education to capacitate health, but we also know that a, a good bit of the training uh, is not sufficient to, to get those health systems to where many of the leaders uh, wish for them to be. So we're conducting a new study to uh, see if we can analyze that gap. Um, and so anyway, uh, I love teaching in the program. Uh, the community is probably my favorite thing. Under Dr. Craven's leadership, we have created just an extraordinary community. Uh, we have wonderful social events where we geek out and talk about our most favorite things we're learning and our most favorite things that we're thinking about in the world. And um, I, I can't emphasize enough how, how much social cohesion we have in the program over its history. So uh, I'll leave it at that. I hope you sincerely hope you join us, Joe. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Brian. Safe driving. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wonderful. So next, actually, I'm going to pull up uh, a recorded two and a half minute a video, and this is coming from Professor uh, Carolyn Heinrich, and she is uh, a professor that's now doing her sabbatical in Oxford, London, and but she wanted to uh, make sure that she sends her uh, greetings. And so uh, let's see, we can share screen and then we will play. Hi, prospective IAPM students. My name is Carolyn Heinrich. I'm a professor of public policy education economics at Vanderbilt University, and I am really happy to be a part of the IAPM program and very happy to welcome you to our admitted class. And hopefully I will see you next fall in um, the core course that I teach in our curriculum, International Organizations and Economic Development. I um, just want to introduce myself. And uh, since I couldn't be with you, I'm currently I'm the visiting George Eastman professor at the University of Oxford just for the year. And so I'm over here in uh, Oxford, England, enjoying my time here. Um, while I'm here, I'm doing some research on how we contract across organizations to deliver public services, important services, especially to vulnerable populations. And so I'm working with a group at the Government Outcomes Lab, which collects information from all over the world on how we um, 
uh, work together, public and private organizations to deliver services includes things like development impact bonds, which are used to deliver services in developing countries, again, often to vulnerable populations. So um, I'm working with a group here on that project. And um, I also, uh, a lot of my work does focus on um, ways we can reduce poverty and improve the health, um, education, economic well-being of, of individuals, including children. Um, I do kind of a range of research, both domestic and international. Um, one of my domestically oriented research projects right now um, works with linked health and education data and are looking at interventions that are intended to support children's mental health. So that's a project I'm working on in Tennessee. And I've also done some recent work looking at uh, online education, kind of a deep dive in that and have a book and some research articles on that. Um, I love teaching to our IEPM students. I uh, get excited about uh, hearing about your research interests. I have a range of research interests across different uh, policy areas um, in the international realm and uh, certainly look forward to talking more with you when I hopefully see you in class with me next year. Anyways, welcome to, um, to Vanderbilt. Um, hope you decide to join us and I um, hope you have a wonderful day. Great. All right. So uh, now we have um, Dr. Nancy Dixon here. And so she is also a faculty member and also in charge of uh, the practicum experience and teaching a, a practicum portfolio class. And then she also has such a wealth of experience um, in the international collaborations that we have at Vanderbilt. We've worked together for 15 years. Nancy. Thank you, Sho. Yes, first, let me say welcome and congratulations. We are excited to welcome you here at Vanderbilt Peabody College um, into the IEPM program. Um, as Sho and Brian, I'm also a um, double door, so have earned my both of my master's and my doctorate here at um, Vanderbilt. Um, and so just a little bit about myself, as, as Sho mentioned, I teach in the IEPM program and I teach the uh, practicum portfolio course. So that course is um, your first semester of your second year, and it's an opportunity to bring together your theory and practice and an opportunity to think about how do we take what we're learning in class and apply it in the real world. Um, and why that works well with me is I spend a lot of time thinking about how to um, design, launch, and support our international programs that we have on campus. And currently, I'm working um, as the lead uh, liaison, if you will, between our partnership with AUIB, American University in Iraq, Baghdad, and Peabody, as we help them design and launch uh, one of the first and kind of innovative college of education they have in country. So we're really excited to be partnering with them and thinking about how to bring um, teacher training uh, to uh, the universities in, in Baghdad. Previously, um, uh, for the last 13 years, I had worked to design and launch the um, Humphrey Fellowship Program. And the Humphrey Fellowship Program brings mid-career educators from around the world uh, to Peabody for a year. Um, and they are here to learn about our education system while thinking about what they can do when they return home. And the great thing about the Humphrey Fellows are that they audit courses, many courses in the um, IEPM core program. So they're in your classes. They are there to learn. They're there to share. Um, they're there to partner. Um, they also serve as uh, practicum hosts for your summer practicum. So they're a great resource that we have on campus. Um, so just Welcome and thank you. And um, please reach out without any with any questions. Thank you so much, uh, Nancy. I know um, you're really busy. We have another meeting um, prepared uh, for for our project, and so feel free to uh, exit if you if you need to. And then I have the rest of the students uh, with us. I really want to uh, thank you all for coming. I know it's so soon, right after you getting your letters, and and you are probably still thinking about your questions. And um, so very briefly. Uh, 
an introduction of myself and my work um, before we uh, open up some of the slides for the program. And you probably have uh, already um, noticed that um, I am um, a probably uh, someone from, from, from China with a Chinese color calligraphy in my in my office. Um, I uh, grew up in Nanjing, China and uh, went to the University of uh, Peking University uh, in Beijing and uh, came here as a graduate student and stayed. Um, so in the last 30 years and I've um, really um, worked uh, extensively both in the government nonprofit and then eventually in academia, but also, um, you know, learning um, uh, different parts uh, of the US uh, education and workforce systems and, and understanding the importance of uh, the role of education can play, but especially education policy and, and management. And so my um, work um, focuses on school leadership, teacher leadership, uh, teacher professional development, and, and to look at uh, best practices in different settings and really um, work on the, the, the process of making sure there's effective translation and transfer of uh, these practices. Um, and for them to be uh, easily adapted and, and to be beneficial to build local capacity. Um, so the some of the work uh, that uh, our colleagues mentioned, and these are the things that you'll be learning in this program, and also um, in many ways uh, drawn from our own um, learning and, and scholarly experiences. And, and that's the very exciting part. Um, so I do wear multiple hats um, at the university. Um, I serve as the Associate Dean for International Students and Affairs. So those of you who are international students, you might hear from me from, from that role. Um, and we will also have another uh, webinar for just international students coming to Peabody uh, next Wednesday. But I also serve as the program director for this amazing program that started uh, in 2005. Um, and the IEPM program um, is um, a program, as uh, Professor Heuser talked about, the most socially cohesive um, um, and uh, innovative um, a group of students that uh, are in, really interested in applying the most rigorous methodological um, uh, innovations but to the most challenging issues internationally. And we know that uh, with the domestic and, and global uh, instability and crisis and needs, um, so much is needed for uh, people who understand both what are some of the general um, principles and ideas that could lead to potential success, but also what are the challenges and solutions uh, to uh, local capacity building and, um, and you know, uh, adaption to uh, different methods. So those are some of the things that, that we're working on. Um, I am the uh, principal investigator for the Humphrey Fellowship Program that I will talk a little bit about, and also uh, the faculty um, principal uh, um, uh, investigator for the American University in Baghdad, in Iraq. We're also in the middle of writing several different grants, which the students can be uh, intimately involved uh, for, uh, for our work. Okay, and I also would encourage you to put in the chat space uh, your questions. I saw one question that came in about the, um, the May Master, Professor Smith mentioned, how long is the program? So typically the May Master program is for four weeks and we're building it as a, a combination of maybe two weeks. Uh, so we're still in the design phase and that's uh, to be implemented in May of 2024. So it's perfect when for uh, your cohort uh, to come in after a year and, and ready to think about different elective courses. And so potentially two weeks here um, in the, um, on campus to learn about the conceptual framing, uh, the methods that might be applicable uh, and, and context in the different countries that you are exploring um, to get enough of the academic language and preparation before you uh, embark on a journey for exploration um, and then um, potentially uh, seven to ten days abroad uh, with our faculty uh, um, who have um, 
faculty members who have uh, established uh, a, um, a curriculum and a schedule with our partnering uh, institutions. So that's a brief answer um, for, for your question, Minami. Uh, excellent question. So feel free to, if you don't want to turn your camera on, which usually for our first um, webinar students don't feel that comfortable and it, it's okay, you can put your questions in the chat. Okay, so I just have uh, a couple of slides and I know all of you uh, have explored our webpage and, um, and and seen lots of that information. So I don't want to um, take too much of that time. Uh, just highlighting some some of the key features, and then we will go to the uh, Q and A. Um, so as you can see from um, our webpage, um, that we have um, a few of the uh, key components of the program described, you know, in terms of our curriculum design, the practicum, and also um, you see uh, the access, uh, some of the um, profiles of our alumni and uh, what kind of a jobs that they have taken. And so um, in, in case um, in the uh, situation of our curriculum, you know, it's 36 hours and um, some students might ask the question, why is uh, the Peabody uh, program two, um, two years as compared to uh, some of our, our peers might have much shorter programs? Um, so indeed, uh, those program lengths might be very different and also our design and intention uh, of what we're training the students for might be also different. Uh, we have uh, two sets of courses. One would we consider as core courses and students can choose from. And, and we also have elective courses. So the core courses really focus on the um, the um, rigor and the structure of a toolbox that you could use, you can take with you um, when you graduate. Um, so we provide both qualitative and quantitative uh, methods classes that students are required to take. And we also, because a lot of the uh, times the two years in your master's program, I feel like um, students are A, exploring and understanding more about themselves, B, um, exploring understanding about the field of work that you're getting into. So even some of the students, when they feel strongly that they come in, know exactly what they want to do, um, you know, in two years or in, in their lives. And once they get in and understand so much, you know, there's so many options and, and, and possibilities in the field. So we wanted to introduce that to the students. And so we um, we have core courses uh, focusing on the K-12 education policy internationally, higher ed, international organizations and development, and also global health and human development. Um, so those are courses um, taught by the professors that you, uh, you have just met um, um, briefly. And, um, and so we are also, because of this structure, we uh, are a program that's called a STEM uh, program. So that's CIP stands for the classification of instructional programs. And um, that's done by the Department of Education and also used for immigration purposes. And so the STEM program um, in this category, we are an educational evaluation and research program because of the rigor of our courses. And then students uh, after graduating get, can actually have internships and um, on the job training that is um, that's up to uh, one year and with two year extensions. And this is particularly relevant for our international uh, students. And then we have just an amazing number of elective courses uh, students can, uh, can take, not only from our department, which is leadership policy and organizations, but also we have um, four other departments, very specialized and, and highly ranked um, around the world uh, for uh, their expertise in teaching and learning, psychology, special education, and human and organizational development. And also students can take classes outside of Peabody. So we have been at business school, law school, uh, a center for global health, and any kind of area studies in Latin American studies, Asian studies, um, uh, African diaspora studies. And so a lot of these uh, courses are available for our students to take uh, and uh, considered uh, accept acceptable for um, um, 
our elective requirements. So that's a combination. And so students uh, have a program of study that uh, upfront and then each semester you take a couple of core courses and an elective. And then towards the second year, you, your um, course load will be more elective classes once you're um, having a better direction and also narrowing down some of your interest areas too. The practicum class also, it's a, a feature that makes our two-year program really strong and because it happens typically in the summer. And then some of the students actually continue some of the practicum, pra, practicum work in the second year. And it's a, something that students um, um, find uh, most applicable because after they take the uh, research um, uh, class and data uh, analysis class in the first and the second semesters, and they apply some of their learnings in their um, internship or practicum work and find out what they like and what they don't like and, and see how they actually can figure out their interest values and aptitude and how those things uh, align. And we provide a lots of um, support and counseling along the way, especially with uh, Professor Nancy Dixon's work. And so um, you might have more questions and we provide actually monthly guidance for students uh, for the practicum. And coming back from the practicum in the summer, students usually are so invigorated and excited and really have even more clarity and purpose uh, when they uh, select their elective courses. You know, if the program is only for one year, can you imagine that basically in the second semester, you're looking for a job and you're still trying to figure out what you have, you know, gathered or learned uh, from the limited courses that you have and also limited understanding of, of the field that you're getting into. So there are pros and cons of either type of uh, lengths of programs, but we feel strongly that the two-year program, all of our graduates feel strongly that the two years is the amount of time that they needed to um, for them to be prepared to be a very com uh, competitive uh, young professional entering the, entering the field. Uh, we also have um, the IEPM program uh, is uh, um, a strong partner and a kind of a sister program with the Humphrey Fellowship program that Professor Dixon uh, talked about. We started the program in 2009, so it's in its 14th year. We've had more than uh, 150 fellows around the world. And um, so if you um, get to go to our website that I just showed, just look up Humphrey Fellowship Program Vanderbilt and all the fellows that we have an interactive GIS map um, can serve as internship um, host sites or our professional partners uh, for affiliations for your uh, research uh, studies. Um, and so those are and this, the fellows each year we have about 10 to 12 fellows with us and they're in our classrooms. Uh, we collaborate with them to develop uh, impact plans, evaluation practices, so that your learning actually become truly immediately applicable and useful for um, the leaders around the world in education. So those are some of the things I wanted to talk about. And in terms of the type of jobs our students uh, get into, um, I would say there are kind of a, a several main tracks, um, organizations, uh, you know, uh, large or small nonprofit organizations, uh, some, some of them in the US, in DC, New York, uh, California, or some of them actually in uh, Nashville, you know, um, uh, um, Houston, Dallas, and places, um, uh, Atlanta, to work with uh, using international funding, either um, as intermediate uh, organizations to manage funding for policy analysis and uh, impact evaluations. But a lot of students also go into um, um, you know, uh, preschool to uh, high school, uh, we say P-12 or K-12 uh, uh, entities, um, the U.S. Um, systems are actually, especially the public schools are extremely diverse and there are lots of things we can learn globally, but actually use that locally. Um, so you can see a lot of our students working in the U.S. Uh, or, or in their own home countries higher ed for international affairs, for global education, study abroad. Um, that's where our students also have found a lot of good jobs. And some of them at Vanderbilt in Nashville. 
Um, and then you see some other organizations and about 8% of our students eventually move on to get their PhDs. And that's a pretty high percentage compared to our peer programs. Um, not all of them do it immediately. Some of them will actually work for a couple of years, which I highly encourage students to do um, before they actually seek recommendation letters from professors and apply for the PhD. And by then they are, again, even have further clarity about their interest areas and what they would like to do with their scholarship. And so those are some of the career pathways our students uh, have taken as well. Yeah, so um, I know that went pretty fast, um, but I just wanted to just highlight a few of our key features and that way uh, I can open up uh, for uh, questions that you might have. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing so that we can actually um, see if there are any questions coming in. So, any questions? It's okay if you don't have questions um, in a session. All right, good, Michelle, thank you. How much career support placements, uh, connections do the students get after the graduation? After the graduation from the university, a lot. Um, so our um, career uh, center, um, it's actually uh, for Peabody. We have our own uh, career center. We have some amazing um, staff members for the uh, career center. Um, the IEPM has an assigned uh, career counselor to us. Um, we work with students um, really throughout um, their, you know, career, even after they have started, but particularly uh, within the one to two year um, uh, range, because um, students might still be uh, changing jobs and exploring their options. Um, so it's really intense um, after they graduate for six months. And then I actually um, stay in touch. We, we have a, um, an internal shared um, spreadsheet of our students and where they are. Our students uh, who have graduated recently also provide uh, mentoring and support for the students we have um, still, um, you know, current students. It's, a, it's an amazing, uh, we call that IEPM family but also it's amazing social capital. Um, so the practicum opportunities, usually we uh, get a lot of them from um, our own uh, alums and also for the jobs uh, for our students, we have um, informational interviews set up by the Career Center. And we also have um, these um, um, kind of a practice speed dating type of job interviews uh, with um, our um, uh, alumni group. Um, and then um, as far as, you know, writing recommendation letters and providing more support, um, the students, once you're an IEPM student, you basically are part of this uh, family that is uh, consistent support. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Michelle. And um, we can actually provide um, some also for the students who are thinking about coming to the program and not quite sure, um, let us know what questions you have and then we'd be happy to connect you with either current students or also uh, recent graduates as well. Okay. So again, um, you have um, the letter uh, that we sent you. So um, you have my email address um, too. Feel free to email me and um, I will, um, but I'm also following up with all the students um, to make sure that you are connected with. We have a uh, student coordinator um, that um, works with all our current students for social events and also understanding the needs of the students and bringing up to the professors. And so Nathan, Faber is his name. And so he's gonna also reach out to all of you to make sure that you can actually just ask student to student type of questions. The um, USECC course, uh, Ava, 
Um, it's um, in, we are um, actually redesigning that. Um, currently, yes, it's required for international students and it's a really fun class uh, on Fridays for um, 10 modules and uh, builds a, a, a learning community for our international students and also connects the students with the resources that we have. So I'll be happy to talk more and we will be providing a lot more information for, um, for the students. Okay. Um, yes. So can you speak a little about financing options for international students? So we um, provide uh, some um, scholarships for our students, but um, the scholarships are not going to be enough to support uh, students, especially international students, uh, on just by relying on the scholarships. And it is really important for immigration purposes uh, for international students to demonstrate that you will have sufficient funding on your own to, um, to uh, support you while you're here for the two years. Uh, there might be uh, other external uh, funding sources, either from your, um, your home country or um, there are uh, student loan options. And so for students um, that, um, because international students are not, not eligible for um, American federal um, aid, uh, student aid. Um, so those are some of the things and options you will have to explore. And then I'd be happy to um, you know, connect you with our financial aid office and, and explore some of that options. For our international students, um, you can also come to our next session on Wednesday that information is provided. Uh, we will have, um, uh, staff members from the International Student and Scholar Services and Financial Aid to um, actually provide more information there. Great. Okay. So unless I see more questions, um, we can uh, end today's webinar and it's recorded and we will share with other students and you can also watch this again, but feel free to reach out to me uh, when, when you just uh, want to connect and, um, and find out more about the IEPM program. I really appreciate you coming today, and I look forward to seeing you soon or hearing from you.